In 1 Samuel 25, we see the unfolding of this encounter, the story between Abigail and David. And it's often said that, that Abigail is the quintessential woman to show us how a, how a, a wife is to treat a husband. And I've mentioned in other videos that we've lost this Abigail heart in society as these roles want to be fluid and, and, and intertwine and interchange. But this role of an Abigail is essential, is essential for us being a godly people in the body of Christ. The story begins when, when, uh, when Nabal's men are out with the flocks and they're 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 fleecing and they're harvesting and they're doing all he had a massive herd he had thousands of sheep and about a thousand goats and the men are off in another area doing all this work it is a particularly dangerous time because there were other tribes and other nations the moabites specifically who would wait at harvest time whether it was it was it was a uh, uh, harvest of produce in, in grains or with a harvest of livestock and they would wait till all the work was done everything was packaged and ready and raisins and cakes and uh, uh, figs and, and everything was already done and packaged then they would come to the storehouses and steal everything so it was a custom of this time it was it was it was part of the culture that strong men warriors would position themselves around the boundaries of these herdsmen and protect them not only just from the tribes but also from animals all this blood going on you would have lions you would have bears you would have wolves different things coyotes that would try to come in and take advantage of what's going on but primarily it was protection from other nations other tribes other peoples coming in and stealing harming hurting and so that's what was going on david's men had positioned themselves around nabal's men and proffered this protection and so after it was all over, after it was complete, and there was abundance, David sent men to Nabal's home and said, Would you honor us? Would you please pay us for our service? He wasn't demanding, and he wasn't telling them how much that he had to pay them. He was saying, Out of your abundance, all that the Lord's given you, in our customs, as in uh, the, the video that we did about the corners of our fields, Leviticus 19, as the Lord, his commandments and precepts and judgments say, leave the corners of your field, leave, leave part of your surplus for others. May we have a portion of that surplus. And Nabal's response was crude, arrogant, inciting, hostile, threatening, ugly. And David's men went back to David and told him. And David's response was, Well, we're going to go kill you and every man in your household. This is not how you treat the presumptive king. This is not how you treat a man of God. This is not how God's people treat other members of God's community. This is not how Jews treat Jews. This is how the nation of Israel, this is not how we operate. And you're over the top. And so David tells his men to gird their swords and towards Nabal's house they go. Abigail, Nabal's wife, here's what's going on. She knows she can't approach Nabal. She knows he won't listen to her. So she begins to gather up everything in her household all of these gifts, all of these, these provisions to make the request of David honored and restitution for the offense. And she sends those ahead of her, much as Jacob did for Esau, sends those ahead of her. And then she gets on a donkey and she starts down through the mountain pass. Being a wise woman, she starts down the same path that she knows they would be coming up when you're approaching for an attack. And she meets David along the way. And she gets off of her donkey and she falls on her face and she begins to implore David not to destroy the household. Abigail does three things. She does this triune of things. She acknowledges who David is. 
She acknowledged it in front of her entire household when she had them get all the provisions together and send them ahead of her. She acknowledged it in front of David's community, David's household, his men, by having these gifts arrive before her as I am less than this to you. I want to mollify your anger and have you start the process of forgiveness even in advance of me approaching. And then when she approaches him, she falls on her face. More affirmation of who he is and acknowledgement before his community and before her people that are there. And then she personally opens her mouth and affirms who David is. All of these A words. Very interesting. She does all of that. And then she immediately agrees with him. The scripture that says, kiss the son, lest he be angry. S-O-N, kiss the son, lest he be angry. She's saying, you're right. We're wrong. You provided a service before the Lord. This is not extortion. This is not some, some scheme that's being run. Hey, I'm going to do some protection thing for you and now you have to pay me. This was the custom. Everybody knew what was going on. There was no secret here. She's going, you're right. We were wrong. You provided a service. I acknowledge that. I'm, 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 I'm agreeing with you. And there should have been payment. We were wrong. And then she assuages him. That appeasement of saying, listen. I'm the one that's wrong. Abigail's saying, I'm the one that's wrong. I didn't even know your men were there. And as the woman who runs this household, I should have known. And I should have been able, knowing my husband, and knowing that he's a fool, and knowing that his decisions are poor, I should have been preparing, I should have been plowing, I should have been turning this soil, breaking up the clots in his heart to prepare him to pay you, because I know my husband, and I know that he would make a foolish and angry decision. I agree with you. It's my fault. I acknowledge who you are. I agree with your position. And I want to assuage and mollify you. I want to appease you by saying, it's my fault. Here are all the gifts. Here is payment. Here is restitution. Please, please have mercy upon us. This heart before the Lord is what David fell in love with. He saw the beauty and the majesty and the wisdom and the intellect and the grace and the charm. He saw all that this woman was and he fell in love with her. And we can make a mistake right here and say, this is how a wife treats her husband. David's not her husband. Nabal's her husband. The real story is, how does Abigail treat Nabal? You see, Nabal was a crass, cruel, proud, arrogant, hostile, horrible person to be around. He actually despised Abigail, wouldn't even listen to her, wouldn't even entertain her notions, her ideas, wouldn't consult with her at all. Neither would he with anybody in his whole household. He was estranged from everybody and loved it that way. Didn't want any change at all. There was a hatred, a despising. There was nothing in Nabal towards Abigail that was pleasing, that was assuring, that was loving, that was endearing. There was nothing, nothing. Yet Abigail offered her life for his, saying it's my fault. I didn't even know your men were there. It was my fault. I wasn't the helpmate. It's my fault. I'm in charge of the household. I'm a woman of God. 
Scripture says it's easy for us to love people that love us. It's easy for us to be kind to people that are kind to us. Where we really represent Christ is when we are Christ for people who deserve it, not at all. Not unlike Christ who gave himself for us while we were yet enemies, when we were actively waging war. The wife, the woman, gets to represent Christ in all of life in these situations. She gets to be the very heartbeat. She gets to be all of that that is Christ to the rest of the world. She gets to be Proverbs 31, as Abigail was Proverbs 31, before Proverbs 31 was even a thing. Amen? Looks like we got company. Amen.